I am Sharmin Hafiz and I will be your host for the day. I would like to introduce you to all to our guest speaker, Dr. Shravar Kutta. Our beloved sir is the chairman of IMAMS in Kazakhstan and HOD and Professor of the Department of Surgery at Santosh Medical College and Hospital. He has more than 21 years of enriched experience in his field and he joined Santosh Dimitri University in the year 2000. Having two international and more than 15 national research publications in his same journey, he would be speaking with us, speaking to us on today's topic, Hospital Infection Prevention and Control. IPC is a scientific approach and practical solution designed to prevent harm caused by infection to patients and healthcare workers. It is grounded in infectious diseases, epidemiology, social science, and health systems. It is the need of the hour in the ongoing COVID pandemic. So, thank you for the seminar. We all welcome you. The mic is all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for inviting me for this session of hospital infections. Uh, Harsh, please allow me to share my PowerPoint presentation. You can do it now. Okay, thank you, Harsh. So as I see that yes, the... Okay. That the theme of uh, this month is blue, so I am wearing blue color. So I hope it fits in your whole system, my blue color. So just open the PowerPoint. Is it moving? Is the yes, PowerPoint sir. moving? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, uh, all the beloved students, especially Anika and all the team of IMA MSN, on, on behalf of Santosh University, I wish you all the best because we are going through a very tough time and you should all know how the hospital infection prevention and control is to be taken because it is a essential part and this is going to help you in saving yourselves, saving others also. So I begin my presentation that the benefits of IPC are basically to protect yourself, protect your patients and ultimately protect your family, community and the environment because all are dependent on us. So along with the HIV, Hepatitis B and Hepatitis C, so this is a new fourth entity now where the standard precautions will be applied for all patients who are coming to the hospital. So now we will have four tests now for all the patients like Hepatitis C, B and HIV. Now COVID testing is also very important. This is not only important to save yourself, but to save others also. So there are some parts of uh, this infection prevention and control, which includes hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, how to don and doff a PP kit, how to do environmental training, how to take care of the laundry and waste management. So first of all, some tips about the hand management and hygiene, because as you all know that this is a SARS-CoV-2 virus, which gets transmitted by airborne or by touching or by direct touch through contaminated surfaces or objects and touching our own face, mouth, nose or eyes. And it can be present in urine and stools for 14 days to 30 days. So if the virus is there, it can be traced in stools for 30 days. Although it's a respiratory virus, but it can be present in the toilet area. And this hand hygiene is important because all the time we are touching through so many surfaces like door handles, we are giving medications, we are using our cell phones, we are using instruments, and then we are touching the patients also. So that's why the hand hygiene is very important. For hand hygiene, these are the areas which are all always infected, like the web spaces, the tips of the fingers and the thumb, they are the most infected. So they are ignored while we are washing our hands. So whenever we are going to touch a patient or while doing any procedure, like we are holding a rails tube and before and after rails tube touching, you are going to sanitize your hands. So this is the main important thing that sanitization of your hand has become a prime importance and not touching your face is second thing. 
so whatever you are doing inside the ward with the patient before and after the sanitization has to be done and ultimately when you come out of the ward it is essential to wash your hands this hand washing should not be done inside the ward it has to be done outside the ward so that's why it is important when you come out of the wards because you won't be sitting at home for a long time you will be coming in in a couple of months to this place like from 1st august or from 15th 16th august you will be coming back to the hospital maybe so if you are coming then you have to experience you have to apply such kind of standard precautions hand washing is of two types one is with sanitizers like alcohol based rubs and second is with soap and water soap and water is the best medium to wash your hands but do not do it for 10 or 15 seconds you have to wash your hands for 60 seconds so with soap and water leather has to come and then you have to wash your hands for 60 seconds and if you are having a hand rub there you have to wash your hands for because one uh, sanitizer whatever you are having one pump gives you 1 ml of liquid so three pumps are needed to sanitize your hands at one time and then you can rub your hand for 20 seconds that sanitizes your hands completely there should be no jewelry on the body koi kade nahi koi chudi nahi earrings nahi no chains should be there and they should be basically without all those metal things and then you can be very much safe the formula for hand washing is suman ke suman means as for sidha so whenever we are washing our hands so this is sidha you can all practice this thing so sidha means touching both the palm, palms and then you are doing it then followed by u ulta so this is ulta where the back of the hand is to be rubbed five times on both sides and then m is for mutthi so mutthi is like this a is for angutha angutha and then n is for nakhun nails and k is for kalai so this is a desi formula suman k seedha ulta mutthi angutha nakhun or kalai so if you practice this so you are not going to miss any part of the hand which cannot be washed so hand washing hame bachpan se sikhai jati hai and we are there into it so it should not be a difficult thing for us for environmental cleaning these are the things which are needed for the environmental cleaning like all the things which are there including the sister desk doctor's desk table chair bed rails to iv stands they are all all to be sanitized and this sanitization is to be done with sodium hypochlorite solution so the small equipments can be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol like stethoscope bp cuffs and small small instruments whereas all the other areas of the opd and of the ipd they are to be they are to be disinfected with sodium hypochlorite solution so whenever you are going to a room you are not supposed to touch the walls you are not supposed to touch the door you are not supposed to touch the handles you are not supposed to touch that telephones do not touch any light switches also so stay away while you are coming to the hospital you have to stay away from all such surfaces because they can be infected although the lot of precautions are being taken in the hospital to just uh, decontaminate them but still these are the surfaces which are high touch areas so these are touched again and again and again so that's why we have to be careful about them like alumina handles telephone light switches and they are low touch surface areas like walls like the mirrors and the windows so these are less touch surface but do not try to touch anything maintain some distance from the all these surfaces so you can be very much safe so you can if you are supposed to open a door with through a handle or knob it is better to wear glove and without sanitizing your hands you should not if your gloves are not there then you should not open it directly first of all sanitize the handle sanitize the hand then only open it for the floor cleaning it is recommended ki ab jhadu nahi lagegi jhadu se dhool dhool udti hai so it is a wet mop now so, uh, because all the aerosol spread should be avoided and while we are doing a floor mopping there you have to do a figure of 8 kind of stroke because it is going to start from the area which is most clean and to the area where the patient is so if the patient is in the middle of the ward you can start mopping the floor from extreme of the wall and then you can come to the middle of the room so that's how the mopping has to be done which you should all learn because you are if someone is doing wrong you have to instruct how to do 
so these are the things which our sisters are doing it these are the wrong things like this sister is wearing a bangle over here and with a chain over here and the, the earrings are there and the shoe covers are not there over here and this is a tag which is hanging in front whenever she is going to bend down this is going to touch the patient so that's these are the wrong things which we have done this is the kind of sodium hypochlorite solution which people ask me that what do you mean by 4 to 6% so you have to make this solution into 1 liter solution so the technique is to do 200 ml of this 4 to 6% solution followed by 800 ml of water so this may this makes a 1 liter solution 200 ml of sodium hypochlorite 800 ml of water so this makes a 1% sodium hypochlorite solution and this is the best thing you can keep it in your home also so whenever you are entering the home you can put it on your shoes under the shoes so that it does not infected and all the things which are brought from outside they are to be sanitized with sodium hypochlorite leave it for an hour or so and then you can wash them and use them so these are some of the instructions which i give how to wear a pp kit and how to do it these are the some of the wrong methods which the patient uh, with the people are doing it so we just wanted to show you how the wrong method because they are all contaminating the areas they cannot drink water like in this the water is there they they cannot remove it and drink water like this so it, it has to be a very safe procedure this is the figure of eight strokes then the role of triple bucket system has come because the triple bucket system says that you should have three types of water one is water and detergent in one bin in the second dustbin you should have water only and the third bin should have water plus sodium hypochlorite solution so the first mopping is to done with the water and detergent followed by water and third is to be done with the disinfectant so this is the triple bucket system which is being purchased by most of the hospitals which can be used as a trolley and the mops can be done so if you are having a hospital in at your place then you can advise such kind of thing regarding the personal protective equipment or the pp kit that you must have heard so it has got multiple parts like it has got a face mask it has got a n95 mask face shield goggles are there then the whole gown is there which is known as the hazmat suit and then there is a plastic body apron along with gloves and a head gear like the ot cap is there so the head cover is basically for all those people who are having long hair so once you wear this head cover all the hair should be inside the head cover they should not be outside the head cover masks are very important because you got just two qualities of mask one is a triple layer mask in triple layer mask there is a nose pin on the top which can be tightened and in 995 also like i am wearing a n95 mask this mask is also a good mask which tightens so but it is important how to use them do not take any mask which is not certified because these are the certifications like niosh n95 is certified by india and these are the certifications by us so that's why any mask which has got this certification can be used otherwise people are just now selling duplicate masks in 2020 rupees these masks are now available but they are dangerous for you because they do not serve the purpose the mask should be of such kind of thing like it is going behind their mask in which only a small amount of a dory is there which can come to your ear they are dangerous because they are not very safe and the mask should be known how to wear it how to take it off also so while you are doing in your routine practice also then also you should know n95 is the mask which you should all use but for home and in local locality you can use a three ply face mask and three ply face mask you can you can just blow out from the three ply face mask and you can see whether some air is coming out or not from front if air is not coming out then it is okay otherwise it is also dangerous so this is how the n95 is one one eight six zero. The fourth hand hygiene. First of all, hand hygiene is to be done. Choose the correct size of the mask and ensure there are no defects. Hold the n95 in your palm with the nose piece at fingertips. Hand head straps freely below hand. Position the n95 under your chin with the nose piece up. Under the chin, a nose piece While up. While holding the N95 in place, pull the top strap over your head so it rests high on the back of your head. 
pull the bottom strap over your head and position it around your neck below your ears. If you have long hair, the strap must be positioned beneath your hair. Untwist the straps. Position the N95 low on your nose. After wearing this, you can tighten it Use with the nose pin. Mold the nose piece to the shape of your nose by pushing downward and outward while moving your fingertips down both sides of the nose piece. Perform a fit check by placing both hands completely over the mask. Be careful not to disturb the position and exhale sharply. If air leaks around your nose, adjust the nose piece as described in step 5. If air leaks at the mask edges, adjust the straps back along the sides of your head. Perform the check again if an adjustment is made. So if the air Where leaks, the right size mask, it is going to leak into your eyes. So it is important to place some micropore tape on the top so that no air goes into your eyes if it is leaking. After putting on mask. But donning a mask is not very important. Removing is very important. How to remove it? Pull bottom strap overhead. Maintain the hold on the first strap. Use another hand to pull the top strap overhead. Do not touch front surface of mask. It should be kept in a new clean Ziploc bag for reuse and discarded at end of day unless wet or soiled. Perform hand hygiene after. So basically the mask which is to be used, doffing and donning. These are two words. Donning means wearing and doffing means removing. So if doffing is done properly, you are not going to get infected. For the for the mask, these masks can be purchased for one month, four masks. So one mask can be used today. The, suppose today is Monday. You can use it, then you can put it in a plastic bag. For for Tuesday, you can wear a new mask, Wednesday and Thursday new mask. On on uh, uh, Friday, you can take out the first mask which you had worn on Monday. So no need to sterilize it like that because it is said that after 48 hours, these masks auto automatically they get sterilized. So it is important to make use of four masks at one time. So rather than wearing the same mask again and again. So second part comes to be eye wear. So these are the goggles like swimming goggles are there so that no air goes inside the eyes because eye is also a potential contaminant and you can get infected from the eye also. Gloves can be of two types. One is the normal latest gloves which are usually yellow in color but these are thin. They can be torn and they are not having any kind of layer on the top of them which proves them to be non-infective unless and until they are sterilized. Better to use nitrile gloves. These nitrile gloves are blue in color and they are chlorinated. So if these nitrile gloves are used, they are basically more strong and there are less chances of tear. Gown can be like a hazmat gown can be there which has got all the facilities of wearing. And these are the different recommendations which when you come to the hospital, we can guide you. There's no point in discussing just now. So, but for all the purposes, uh, a face shield is very important for all of you. And this face shield, just a minute. This is a nine inch face shield. And this nine inch face shield can be used just to cover your face. There are 6 inch face shield also but 9 inch face shield is very important to cover your face. So along with your specs, eye goggles, headgear and N95 mask you can place a face shield. But the only problem which comes with the face shield is and mask is it is very difficult to walk around. It is very difficult to breathe because ultimately you will feel like breathing difficulty. For biomedical waste disposal it is very important to dispose because the, dispose, uh, the the waste can come from the COVID ward, it can come from the isolation ward, it can come from the quarantine ward and the labs. So it is essential that we should have a safe handling of the waste. Not only handling, how to dispose it and third is how to transport it. So basically they are color coded dustbins which are there. 
so all the dustbins which are used for covid patients they are yellow marked and all these dustbins are to be sanitized with sodium hypochlorite all the waste which is collected from the covid ward has to go in double layered bags and once the double layered bags are there it prevents any leakage because inside bag if it gets torn the outside bag can take care covid vehicle is separate because they are to be separately shifted on that trolley only so that's why the covid vehicle is separate for all these patients the covid trolley is also separate covid vehicle which comes to collect this waste is separate and the waste from the quarantine ward is to be handled as a covid waste only so the yellow bag in general we have got four type of colors for biomedical waste but just now we are sending all the waste of covid in the yellow bag whether it is it belongs to the yellow bag or not but we are sending just now all the bags all the covid waste in the yellow bag otherwise in general the yellow bag is maintained for collecting waste from human and any tissue body parts along with soil body waste like body fluid like dressings cotton swabs then the blood bags laboratory cultures live or attenuated vaccines and cell cultures red bag is basically used for all the plastic kind of thing like tubings bottles iv bottles iv sets catheters urine bags so these are all plastic items which are being sent in red bags and including the gloves but just now i repeat that in covid times we are sending each and everything in the yellow bag then there is a puncture proof container which is white in color this is basically used for blades and needles only in this sodium hypochlorite solution is there in which the needle is to be dipped and the blue box is for oils the discarded glass oils or the metal or the uh, full oils which are not broken they are to be discarded in the blue box generally we follow this kind of schedule all the waste are to be labeled as covid 19 waste and they are to be sanitized with sodium hypochlorite solution if a patient vomits or there is a delivery in which a large amount of meconium or some fluid has come out on the treating gynecologist and spills on the floor then it is very important not to straight away clean it you have to put sodium hypochlorite for sodium small spills you can use 1% sodium hypochlorite and for large spills you can use 10% sodium hypochlorite and this can be used to cover with absorbent cotton after that you can clean it just like i told you three steps that cleaning but it has to be covered with cotton wait for 15 minutes then you can clean for dead bodies which are occurring dead bodies are to be placed in a sodium hypochlorite soaked sheet and all the holes like nostrils ears and all the holes are to be packed with cotton box and balls soaked in sodium hypochlorite and this whole body has to be put in a zip bag this is a plastic zip bag in which it has to be placed and sodium hypochlorite solution is to be placed on that and people are advised not to open the bag and stay in the way these kind of things they go for burning for where there is some kind of religious issue then deep burial is indicated the depth of the depth should be almost double for burial so this is the normal uh, uh, things which the cleaning staff has to wear like gum boots and plastic aprons for self uh, for preventing infection but we are giving pp kits for all of them along with that so so that they are not infected for your clothes it is not recommended to wear nice nice clothes just common clothes you can wear but these clothes when you go home they should be dipped in sodium hypochlorite solution 0.5% and then washing has to be done with hot water so whatever you are you are wearing it should go into sodium hypochlorite solution so that disinfection is there so a perfect combination of so social distancing hand hygiene wearing of mask and gloves and along with not touching your face at all not touching at all is not going to infect you at all if there is someone who is very close to you and they are regularly meeting that person you should have to be very much careful that that person is also not going somewhere and you are safe otherwise it is advisable because like the number of cases are increasing day by day they are almost doubling up 
इट इज एडवाइजेबल टू स्टे एट होम जस्ट नाउ यू शुड नॉट मूव आउट ये मत सोचना कि मुझे कुछ नहीं हो सकता है एवरी वन इज ससेप्टेबल फॉर दिस वायरस इन दिस इफ द वायरस कम्स दिस वायरस इज गोइंग टू टेक अज टोल उसके अलावा दे आर सम डॉनिंग एंड डॉफिंग सिक्वेंसिस विच वी हैव मेड आवर एट अवर हॉस्पिटल दीज आर काइंड ऑफ डॉनिंग पोस्टर्स यू कैन जस्ट सी द डॉनिंग पोस्टर विच हैज बीन मेड जस्ट अ मिनट so this is a donning poster in which it shows that in this picture first of all scrub is important then sanitize your hands then wear a glove wear a shoe cover after that you are going to take out a pp kit this pp kit you check for any holes and then you have to wear the pp kit like a trouser first then on your waist then from your waist come to the shoulders and then you can just cover this up up to the neck and then put the n95 mask and after putting the n95 mask we'll put the goggles you can put a face shield and then you can cover it, cover it up so in every step you have to use a hand sanitizer for these things and for टॉफिंग डॉनिंग इज नॉट एट ऑल इम्पोर्टेंट आप एक स्टेप पहले और बाद में भी कर सकते हो लेकिन टॉफिंग में पीपी किट को निकालने के लिए यू हैव टू बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल एट ईच एंड एवरी स्टेप सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू क्लीन यूर हैंड्स एंड सिट ऑन ए चेयर देन रिमूव द शू कवर विद विद वन हैंड यूजिंग ओनली देन सैनिटाइज योर हैंड्स एंड देन द एक्सटर्नल ग्लव्स आर टू बी थ्रोन आउट एंड देन फॉलोड बाय सैनिटाइजिंग योर हैंड्स देन यू हैव टू जस्ट remove the face shield after removal of the face shield you have to open the pp kit zip remove the pp kit make it into a laddu small so that the volume in the dustbin is less after throwing the pp kit you have to remove your gloves and here comes the third glove third glove will come you have to wear a new glove over here then remove the Excuse face me, mask sir. yeah yeah Sorry to interrupt, but the slide is not the correct slide that is being shown. You cannot see the slide. The correct slide is not showing. It is showing. It is showing. Thank you. Oh, just a second. now can you see no sir okay wait it is is available yes sir we can thank you okay. yes sir i can just share these uh, photographs with you this whole poster will be shared with you so that you know the steps at the end you can just take out the uh, the n95 mask and the cap like this remove your gloves and then you can wash your hands so after the after the removal of the pp kit you have to not only wash your hands but you have to also take a bath and then you have to come out after washing so that your process is complete at our hospital almost 80 people have gone inside and they have done the duties till now and uh, for pp for uh, covid patients including the icu and the ground floor and the fifth floor which are the isolation wards and at present we have got around 55 patients uh, most of them have been uh, discharged but still daily we are having 10 15 to 20 patients and all are well till now and some of them have expired but the main point is that despite 60 people who have worked in the covid wards including our doctors nurses ward boys and cleaning staff none of them have been infected till date because they have been trained and they have taken care of themselves very nicely so it is important that you if you take care of yourself very nicely there are no chances 
although it is very difficult to say that you cannot take care because you are meeting so many people these days you don't know from where the infection will come but at least those people who are working in the icu and isolation wards they are in constant touch with the patients they are taking good care so i am very much proud of them that they are taking good care and none of them have been infected second thing is hcq prophylaxis should be taken by all including vitamin c vitamin d and zinc which should be taken and it is not going to create any problem hcq so we are giving hcq prophylaxis to all i am also taking for last two months i have already completed two uh, eight uh, eight weeks of my hcq prophylaxis but i am still continuing with it because we are right into the covid wards into the with, with the covid patients so that's why it is very difficult difficult time but still safety is of prime importance wishing you all the best take good care of yourself and do not bring your hand on your face keep washing your hands do not bring your hand on the face this is going to take care of you thank you very much any questions most welcome any questions from anyone thank you sir so much for shedding light on hospital infection prevention and control and enlightening us on the importance of it so it has always been an honor to learn from you and we salute you and all the frontline workers working in this pandemic uh anyone with any questions please type it in the chat or you can say it out loud thank you sharmin thank you very much for the kind words and if you want any presentation or any kind of posters that you need to share i will share it on with the uh, um, any one of you and then you can That's forward it to sir, all your sorry. colleagues thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you sir Welcome. Anyone has any other questions? I would like to proceed uh, and take a moment to express my gratitude to our seniors and our mentors, especially our national convener, Dr. Arvind Swami, our state general secretary, Dr. Rahul Anand uh, of IMMS in UP. I would also like to thank our convener, IMMS in Kajabad, Anita Rao, and our secretary, Rashid Ali. A heartiest thank. you to the organizing team ashwar nikhil vinayak and som harsh for putting up an amazing seminar and informing us all thank you all for attending the seminar hope you all learned something good thank you thank you there are some questions which are being asked like what is the which is the ideal mask to wear for office going people so n95 should be the ideal mask for everyone you you purchase four masks this will suffice for the full month do not rely on the three ply mask if it is possible for you you should wear n95 only okay ji bye bye then bye bye all the best to all of you thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir